Oh, I beg your pardon. Welcome, my friends. Welcome to Al Monticello. Good afternoon. Uh, I've been waiting for you here. That's why I thought I would uh, pour a little of my finest from the cellar. Uh, so this is for you. And uh, if you will, I, I would never want to be out uh, myself to enjoy your company uh, without refreshment. So this uh, is for me. And so there we are to engage this afternoon's confab uh, on visitors at our Monticello. And helping us as moderator uh, is our friend, Miss Alice Lagna. So Alice, we welcome you to be with us again here to moderate the questions from our friends. And uh, before we begin, uh, I would ask of you again, and never to be presumptuous to do otherwise, uh, would you allow me to remove my mask that I might be heard more clearly and distinctly? Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, there, that's better. But I'm happy that we are abiding by the law, uh, particularly to protect and defend ourselves from the vagaries of nature, let alone to continue uh, to pursue science and a better understanding thereof. Well, uh, Ms. Wagner, what is our first curiosity from our friends today. What do you remember about your first visitors to Monticello? Oh my, our first visitors uh, to our little mountain. Well, I remember distinctly that uh, when I removed myself to the mountain, which was in February uh, of 1770, uh, Shadwell House having burned by that part, uh, the house in which I was born and grew up, uh, moving uh, to my little hermitage there it was within but a short time that I was married and brought my new bride to the mountaintop. And that was in January 1772. Uh, very shortly thereafter, as you know, the, the war commenced and uh, our successful uh, declaration of American independence uh, followed thereupon. So as the war continued, uh, Charlottesville uh, became, well, barracks. Uh, for the prisoners, both the Hessian and the, the British prisoners who were captured at the battles of Trenton and Saratoga. So amongst the earliest visitors to our little mountain, to Monticello, uh, were some of these uh, officers, Hessian and British officers, uh, who were prisoners of war. Um, I remember, in fact, uh, two Hessian generals uh, Baron von Redesel and Baron von Gizmo uh, became good friends. Uh, in fact, uh, Baron von Redesel resided at Colle Farm, uh, not too far from here. That was my gift to the Italian nobleman, uh, Signor Filippo Marze. Uh, he left our country to return uh, to the Italies at the time our war commenced. So Baron von Redesel came to visit here at Monticello, and I would go visit him and his family at Collie Farm, and of course we enjoyed sharing, uh, if you will, uh, the finest that I had in my cellar at that time, though I had not yet been to France. And do you know I remember both uh, Generals von Redesel and von Giesemann enlightened me to the, the wines of the Germanies, particularly those to be discovered uh, down the Rhine, uh, Moselle and Gewürztraimer, if you will. Uh, and I was have later able to visit with them and to enjoy seeing firsthand that viticulture. Now, I should not forget that after the war, uh, we were visited here at Monticello as I began the mansion house uh, by a, a French nobleman, the Marquis de Chastelot. Uh, he came out from Williamsburg. Uh, I think it was a good week's journey uh, to visit with us here. He was very curious to meet the author of our Declaration of American Independence. And I remember he described to me that as he approached from the east, uh, that he saw before him suddenly a clearing with the little mountain in the distance, and there on top of the mountain, uh, he saw this jewel box of an edifice. Uh, he remarked to me that uh, from his travels already through our new nation, he had never seen anyone to consult the arts uh, as I had already in designing my mansion house. Uh, we spent a delightful, uh, I think it was a week or so together, uh, traveled about the countryside, 
uh, enjoyed a, a bowl of punch, Arak punch, which my father uh, certainly enjoyed, and uh, would discourse the, upon the ancient authors, and particularly uh, McPherson's Ossian uh, poems. Oh, Ossian to uh, Shastelow and myself was one of the greatest uh, delights during that visit. So I remember that distinctly. Um, of course, as a young boy living at Shadwell, there were many, many visitors because Shadwell Farm was along the Three Chop Road. Uh, that road ordered by George III to have the trees chopped three times every several miles west of Richmond uh, so that many making their way westward into the wilderness would know they are still on that route. So because of that main highway of commerce and migration, uh, the unwritten code of Virginia hospitality always welcomed travelers uh, to come visit, to spend the night and share a meal. So I had the opportunity from my youth to meet many, many uh, who were coming to this country for the first time and so many who looked forward to staying and, and rearing their families. Your next question. How do most people travel here when they come to visit? Well, most people, of course, um, are traveling the roads um, by horse. Uh, you know, I still live in a four mile an hour world. That's the average rate of travel. I know of no place where you can travel any faster than a ship at sea or a horse on land. So many people even either travel horseback or they travel uh, the gentlemen in their phaetons. A phaeton is a very elegant gentleman's carriage. Uh, it can be drawn by either one or, or two horses. Uh, and then, of course, there are the, uh, the stage coaches. And the stage coaches are wont to leave regularly uh, from Richmond. Uh, so many uh, who want to venture out to the West and visit me from afar first travel to either Richmond or Fredericksburg. And then they will take the stage coaches uh, farther on uh, to Charlottesville. Usually, the stage traveling from Richmond travels along the north bank of the James River until it approaches, of course, uh, the confluence of the River Anna. That's a point of fork. Uh, and then those coaches continue up from point of fork uh, along the River Anna. And then usually they cross the ford uh, there at Milton, my father's, uh, my father's mill at Milton, uh, to come farther on and ascend uh, our little mountain. Now, there are many places, inns and ordinaries, where they stay. Uh, usually a day's ride west from Richmond, we'll find one at, at Gordon's Tavern, uh, old Colonel Gordon's uh, Tavern, and they will stay there the night and then make the way farther the next day to arrive at Monticello. Uh, your next question. Most of what is the United States today was lived on by indigenous people when you were young. Do Native Americans ever visit Monticello? Oh, Native Americans often visited uh, my father when I was a young boy. Uh, he was regarded as a good friend of the natives, in particular uh, the Monacans, the Monacan of the Cherokee people. They resided here in the vicinage long before the European ever arrived. Father was very kind to them, and I can assure you, as he continued west on many commissions of the royal authorities to survey, uh, he became well acquainted with many of, the, many of the native tribes and the native peoples who lived far west, even beyond uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains. In fact, uh, he knew many uh, that he met in the company of Colonel Joshua Fry, the two of them, Fry and Jefferson, uh, commissioned uh, by Robert Dinwiddie to extend the Virginia Carolina line 90 miles west than had already been surveyed by uh, the late Colonel William Byrd of Westover. And so uh, Father and Colonel Fry traveled through the Blue Ridge Mountains. I remember, well, it's noted on what is called the Fry Jefferson map. Uh, that they traveled from Peter King's plantation just east of the eastern ranges of the Blue Ridge, uh, directly through the Blue Ridge Mountains uh, to the Holston River. And they, on the west of the Blue Ridge, encountered many native tribes. He invited a number of them to come visit at Shadwell House, so I grew up becoming acquainted with some of the, the native chieftains. Um, I remember having the opportunity uh, to visit the camp of Chief Ontasate, or Altasate, as they referred to him, uh, I recall, and it was extraordinary, his power uh, of speechifying and speech-making. Uh, I remember that we sat entranced uh, there at the campfire with 
all of his braves sitting about as he gave a great and most momentous speech in such extraordinary elocution that we rose up in praise and, and ovation to it until we realized um, we could not understand a single word that he was saying. But it was his fervor, his expression. If you will, his native tongue that likened unto the, to the music uh, of nature, the voices of the wilderness that was so inspirational. So yes, I, I've long been acquainted with the natives to come a visiting. I visited them in their camps. Uh, there were my instructions to Captain Meriwether Lewis, Lieutenant Clark, uh, to visit with as many as they could encounter, to assure them of our friendship. And as a consequence, uh, these uh, native tribes were given uh, invitations to come visit me when I was chief magistrate of our nation in the president's house. And many so did visit with me. And uh, we engaged uh, extensive parlance. So, uh, so yes, it's long been my acquaintance. And I, I hope still to continue what my father always uh, expressed unto us. And that was never, ever take uh, from the native what we may otherwise peaceably purchase from them. Uh, your next question. Since you've retired to Monticello, are you seeing many visitors? Oh, mercy. Huh. Ms. Wagner, I can tell you that since 1809, when I handed the gavel to Mr. Madison, there are increasing numbers of visitors here at our Monticello. And particularly in this year of 20, and I believe the reason is because in six years, we are all going to enjoy a wonderful anniversary. Uh, 18 and 26. The 50th anniversary of the birth of our nation, of our Declaration of American Independence, which the late General Washington referred to as our promise, not only unto ourselves, but to the family of man across the globe, recognizing our inherent rights. So do you know many coming to visit me actually want to know if I am the author of our Declaration? Well, I hope I am reassuring them that certainly I am. And I also hope I am reassuring the many that come here of our founding principles, that they will continue uh, to pass these on one generation after the next, to continually resuscitate and rejuvenate these principles that we may never ever forget them. So yes, I'm happy to say an increase of visitors here to Monticello, which I must tell you is one of the reasons why I have, um, well, taken somewhat of a, um, a retreat on occasion to what I call my retreat house, a poplar forest. Uh, there at the land I inherited from my late father-in-law, Mr. John Wales. Uh, I am building a, a rather elegant, if I say so, uh, octagonal house. And I will spend no less than a fortnight several times a year at poplar forest. So. Uh, no one knows about it to the greatest extent. So with the increasing visitation at Monticello, uh, that's where I get, well, I beg your pardon. I suppose you all now know about Poplar Forest. Well, uh, I dare say I would never deny you a visit there, rest assured. <laughs> your next question. Steve would like to know, what sort of things have you learned from your visitors? Have you ever changed your mind about anything after a conversation with them? Thank you, Ms. Wagner. Uh, Steve, I can tell you I'm always learning, always happy to learn. I would like my mind to continue to be changed upon uh, things that I have continued to think are, are just the way they are, and yet there's nothing you can do about it. No. No, I, I hope I'm bold enough to realize that we must continue to question everything, that that is the foundation of the enlightening of the mind of man. So yes, I look forward to learn much from those who, who visit here. Do you know, upon an occasion some years ago, I was visited by Mr. William Dunlap. Uh, I thought him to be related to the printer, uh, the Irish immigrant who was hired by our Continental Congress, uh, to print the, the first broadsides of our Declaration of American Independence. Well, no, Mr. Dunlop of New York was no relation to Mr. John Dunlop of Philadelphia. But Mr. Dunlop of New York was a theatrical impresario, uh, a theater producer, a playwright, a, a theater director. Why, I learned much from him about the business of, uh, of producing, directing uh, shows. 
theatrical performances. And that made me the more acquainted with theater, to appreciate it the more, when I had the opportunity to, to journey to France. Uh, I often attended the theater there, having learned something about it uh, already. Uh, I have learned a lot from those from foreign lands who come to visit here. Uh, I have learned a lot from uh, the English who have visited here. Their particular perspective, uh, when they were growing up in England during our American Revolution, one Mr. Foster, a young Englishman, came to visit. And uh, I learned about, about him, of the perspective of the Englishman there in their homeland, uh, while their sons and fathers and brothers or engaged in battle with us here in North America. I continue to learn from the French uh, as they uh, visit here. I remember while in exile, uh, the Duc de Rochefoucauld Leoncourt uh, came to visit here and I learned much from him uh, of the consequences of the ensuing French Revolution, what happened to many of my friends and the friends that we held uh, in common. Uh, a concern, if you will, that uh, that the French Revolution could continue to secure itself for the benefit of the French people and many, uh, many throughout the kingdoms of Europe accordingly. Uh, many of science, Alexandre von Humboldt, uh, in, have enlightened me as they have come to visit. The Abbe Jose Carrera, I, I continue to enjoy in his visits here, uh, to learn much of his native land, of Portugal, of course, and, uh, and our discussions in the realms of natural philosophy, otherwise known as science, continue to be the most inspirational in enlightening us to things that at first imagined, proved through objective scrutiny, uh, to be assured in a system of things. So I am never, ever at a default to learn something new uh, and continue to look forward in doing so. Your next question. What are some of your favorite things that you like to show to your visitors? Oh, thank you. Well, I very much enjoy meeting the visitors there at the front door of the east facade uh, to welcome them. Uh, they have across the porch into my Indian hall. Uh, I remember that when uh, Mrs. Margaret Bayard Smith came to visit uh, and she alighted from her carriage, I had already met her on the road. I was on horseback and she was ascending the mountaintop in her carriage and mentioned that I would see her shortly. So I was able to be there uh, at the East when uh, she alighted from her carriage. And as we walked in from the portico, she was so taken with the Indian hall, I said, we will observe that later. Take your time. You must come in to rest uh, and refresh. And uh, so she came in then to the parlor uh, and so engaged to refreshment. And we enjoyed, oh my heavens, I think she was here upwards of about two weeks. Uh, later, her husband, uh, Samuel Harrison Smith, arriving. And uh, we spent much time uh, at the table in lengthy discourse, uh, let alone uh, my introducing her uh, to books, specific books in my library, uh, the certain relics that I have received from uh, Captain Lewis upon his uh, expedition, uh, and as well, uh, enjoying rides about the countryside and walks in our garden. So there's never a want if you will, of something new to, uh, to show my friends and visitors who come here to Monticello. I pride myself in having so much to share with them. Your next question. Does your daughter, Martha Jefferson Randolph, ever play a role in hosting visitors at Monticello? Oh, thank you, Ms. Wagner. Yes, Mrs. Randolph is ever, ever here to, to greet, the more so with increasing numbers of visitors. Now, she has her own farm, but a short uh, time, distance away there at Edge Hill, where she and her husband, Thomas Mann Randolph, uh, reside. But increasingly, uh, she is wont to be here at Monticello, uh, including along with her children, uh, to attend to table, to attend to tea, uh, greeting visitors and um, helping them feel the more comfortable. And no gentleman should ever deny the fact that uh, the woman is the heart of the home. And, and so therefore I rely upon my daughter uh, so very, very much uh, to provide that comfort, uh, that security, and uh, happily the enlightenment for visitors here. I pride myself that Mrs. Randolph is well-educated. Uh, I am thankful for the education she received as a young girl when we were in France 
at the Abbey Royal at the Pentamon. And she shares these experiences with somebody who come to visit here and discourses, I'm happy to say, uh, upon the present politics and uh, our government uh, and history. And, and so I'm very proud that there is a lady here who provides, if you will, as hostess. Uh, and she did so in the president's house when I was there. If she did not preside, then I was fortunate to have the wife of our secretary of state at the time, uh, Mrs. Madison, Dolly Madison, preside as hostess uh, during my terms in the president's house. And also very happy when, uh, when Mr. and Mrs. Madison come to visit. In fact, they have their own room, an octagonal room uh, on the north side of the house. Uh, that they know is theirs or whenever they come by. Uh, your next question. George would like to know if a, the enslaved people here are allowed to have their visitors. George, do the enslaved have their visitors? Well, yes, of course. Yes, they have many uh, to come visit with them and they as well to visit with others. Uh, there is always the element, if you will, of, of going a uh, visiting and some, of course, are, are married, though living at different farms. So I have always welcomed that. And, uh, and I will tell you that uh, I visit with them accordingly as they visit with me. Uh, we've all grown up together. We all know one and the other. And when visitors arrive here at El Monticello, I suggest that they meet our families, uh, the Fawcett's and the Granger's and the Evans's and the Colbert's and the Hemmings. Uh, so this is something, again, that has um, been from our youth, uh, a recognition of, um, well, what could I call it other than consanguinity? Your next question. Following up on that, do enslaved people at Monticello ever interact with your visitors? Yes. Oh, yes, Ms. Wagner. Yes, of course, the enslaved here, and particularly those attendant uh, indoors of the mansion house, uh, are there frequently to interact with those who visit them. I dare say, naturally, to provide for their refreshment and, and for the meals. Uh, this is, of course, a result of them being enslaved for generations and is expected uh, of certain families in particular. So without a question, yes, I, I, I can say the running of the household here at Monticello uh, the providing of the hospitality for those who take their time to come visit uh, would not be possible, either, either for the attention of my daughter or myself, without our enslaved entire maintenance of Monticello Farm, let alone my other farms, would not be possible. The produce thereof neither. Thank you. Your next question. Chester would like to know, with so many family members living with you, where do guests stay? Well, Chester, many I want to assume that my design of Monticello House uh, appears solely for myself. I would like to say that I have sought to design a house that would be welcoming for everyone, not only my family. There are many rooms, uh, both uh, on the second and the third floor, let alone in the immediate uh, area here of the farm where visitors can stay. Uh, the uh, taverns nearby, I spoke of Gordon's, a day's ride. There's also Mickey's Tavern that is on the other side uh, of Charlottesville from my little mountain here. Although someone told me the other day, Mr. Jefferson, no, Mickey's Tavern is just down the road. Well, <laughs> I would be delighted if it were. I'd be more attendant to it and suggest visitors as well. So not only here at the house, but uh, in the neighborhood, uh, there are accommodations and hospitality offered for many uh, visitors. Now there is uh, an inn in the center of Charlottesville there across from the old courthouse. Uh, and that is most comfortable as, uh, as many tell me. So yes, I built Monticello to be of inspiration in its design for many who come to visit to help them understand that the art of architecture can lift the human spirit to a noble sentiment in appreciation of the design of intimate spaces uh, surrounded with ennobling architecture. And we do not spend all of our day in a bed, so a bedchamber need not be uh, ex extensive in its area 
uh, it ought to be more intimate in its prescription of space. So I have a lot of that in the design of my mansion house, and they are more or less uh, behind uh, the public rooms of the mansion house. And so my family has uh, been accustomed to this, and, uh, and I've made an effort to preserve that intimacy, which I knew as a child, uh, growing up in a very modest uh, hall and parlor, uh, Virginia Tobacco Farmer's House. So um, I'm happy to say my visitors thus far, though they, though they have remarked, I have heard, that my accommodations are somewhat spartan, that uh, I serve, though plainly and yet extensively at the table, in great variety of foods, that most seem to be quite satisfied. Now, I'm not going to say Mrs. Thornton, Anna Thornton, the wife of Dr. William Thornton, who both came to visit here at one point, was entirely satisfied. Uh, she had certain comments that uh, I brought to mind in order to make it better uh, for those who would continue to visit. Uh, but that is the only one I can think of who, who found uh, her stay to be somewhat questionable uh, in its comfort. Your next question. Diane asks, uh, have any artists visited you hoping to paint your portrait? Oh, Diane, what a pleasure. I thank you indeed. I will never forget uh, oh, the gentleman's name Karachi desired not to so much to paint my portrait as to make a mold of my my physiognomy, and so he um, he plastered me entirely with a, a straw uh, from my my nose that I might be able to breathe, and then he went off and engaged confab with uh, my family and friends, and you know he forgot uh, my face having been uh, all plastered. And I began unable to breathe. Uh, he suddenly remembered what he had done, ran into the parlor. I was in the parlor at the time. And uh, good Lord, thank heaven, he was uh, able to chip away the plaster mold that I was able to breathe once more. Never forget that occurrence. Uh, though I hope it was a, a good likeness he provided. Now, beyond that, of course, I am delighted in the visit of Mr. Sully, who came down from Philadelphia, Thomas Sully, the Englishman. Uh, he came to this country as a young boy. Uh, he learned his craft from artists already uh, here in our nation. And uh, he, be, he started a studio in, in Philadelphia, is sought after by many individuals because of his most refined and delicate renderings. And uh, he came here through the commission of the Military Academy at West Point to, to paint me, uh, to paint a bust portrait. And uh, here for two weeks, we enjoyed the most extensive and pleasant conversation. He made a very elegant rendering of me. Um, Mr. Madison has a copy of it, and uh, let alone, of course, uh, West Point. Uh, I hear that uh, West Point would like a, a, a copy of me in full uh, stature. And uh, I, uh, I would be happy for that next occasion for Mr. Sully to come visit. Uh, coincidentally, I made certain that uh, when he was here, uh, I wore uh, a very elegant uh, uh, sable lined coat uh, that had uh, been tailored uh, of the gift of, of sable furs that, uh, that I had received uh, from General Casisco, Thaddeus Casisco. And uh, I remember discussing upon one occasion when Mrs. Margaret Bayard Smith came to visit here. I mentioned her earlier. Uh, upon an evening when she was somewhat chilled, well, I brought that and placed upon her shoulders and made comment that you are way wearing the mantle of monarchy. The reason I say that is because the sables uh, had been gifted to General Kosciusko by Tsar Paul I when Kosciusko and his countryman, Julian Nemcevitz, were released uh, from prison there in the Russias. Uh, it was customary uh, to provide a gift of reconciliation to political prisoners at that time. And so there was the, the mantle of monarchy that was worn uh, by Mrs. Mrs. Smith. So Shelley, I think, I'm one of the most esteemed to have come visit me here. Uh, your next question. 
You mentioned your friend Margaret Bayard Smith. Could oh. you tell us a little bit more about her? What a delight. She and her husband. Uh, I knew them in Philadelphia. Now, you know, uh, her family, the Bayards uh, from Delaware, uh, remain ardent Federalists of a political opinion uh, opposite of, um, well, shall we call it anti-Federalist or Democratic or Republican or, uh, or Republican, or as some have remarked, Jeffersonian Republican. Well, regardless, a most charming individual and her husband, Samuel Harrison Smith, the publisher of a newspaper in Philadelphia uh, when our government was seated there in the, in, the, in the 90s. Well, when our government moved to Washington City, uh, the Smiths uh, came with uh, our government, of course, to continue to publish their newspaper. And uh, Mrs. Smith visited often at the president's house. We became good friends. And after I turned the gavel over to Mr. Madison, March of 1809, within but a few months, uh, she came to visit me here at, at Monticello. And I dare say during the time, and I know it was uh, a week or more, uh, she was fascinated with everything that, uh, that we have here upon the mountain and in the house. Um, I mentioned that her husband later came to, to visit as well. We had the most wonderful times spending great lengths of time at the meal table at dinner, a dinner usually commencing at four of the clock. Well, good heavens, we were still sitting there by the time tea would be served around seven of the clock. We enjoyed walks about the gardens. She was quite taken with the extent of uh, my plantings here, the gardens and the vegetables. And I remember one occasion I had decided... Uh, to drive her about the roundabouts here, the mountaintop, uh, there in my, my phaeton. I believe my granddaughter Ellen was attended in that carriage ride. Well, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I was making advance at a great clip, driving too fast for Mrs. Swift Smith's comfort, and she became very concerned. Well, I assured her, place your trust in me, and I will drive safely to your comfort and further happiness. Well, I don't think she believed me. And, and within a time, she admonished that we slow down and she alighted from the carriage. She got out from the carriage. Well, I continued to drive about and then I came across uh, to pick her up once again. And naturally, a gentleman would apologize uh, for that, um, that neglect. But I remember that distinctly. Uh, she was quite fascinated with the four roundabouts that I have here and the fact that they interconnect uh, all of them together. Oh, what a pleasant couple, Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Harrison Smith. Do you know, I dare say, she still is attendant uh, to Washington society and every administration since my own. I believe she keeps a journal, let alone her most descriptive letters. Uh, perhaps someday uh, her long acquaintance with our government in Washington City will result in a publication uh, so that the future might know of, uh, of that particular society in Washington during its earliest years. Your next question. We have time for just one last question, uh, Mr. Jefferson. Geraldine would like to know who have been some of your favorite visitors? Oh, Geraldine, who have been some of my favorite? Well, I dare say it would be impolitic uh, for me to cite one uh, over others. Uh, there have been many that I have enjoyed to greet and continue to greet, particularly as we approach our nation's anniversary uh, in 26. Uh, I look forward uh, to the, the future visitation of the Marquis de Lafayette. Uh, it is said that he looks forward to return here to our nation, will bring his son, George Washington Lafayette, travel through all of the states of our union thus far, and yes, indeed, will visit here at Monticello. That I look forward to. I've been delighted to be paid visit by Daniel Webster uh, from up north, uh, a most engaging individual, I may say, and, and very good friends with the Adams family. Uh, I have yet to receive a visit uh, from Mr. John uh, Adams and will continue to lament the passing of his wife, dear Abigail, back in, in 16. Uh, his son, Quincy Adams, has not visited it yet. I would hope that uh, to occur. Uh, a Philadelphian by the name of Gilpin, uh, Henry Dilworth Gilpin, uh, a family originally from Lancaster uh, in England. 
uh, has come to visit me with a great curiosity. He recently received a degree from Dr. Franklin's old College of Philadelphia, the University of Pennsylvania, uh, there in that, that city. He's reading law, I believe, with, uh, with Mr. Ingersoll in that city, a very fine uh, jurist. Uh, and who else? Oh, I missed, lamentably, I missed the visit of my good friend to whom I was introduced in Paris by Dr. Franklin. Uh, I'm referring, of course, to Monsieur Pierre Samuel Dupont. He came to visit here at Monticello during the time that uh, I was at, uh, at Poplar Forest. Uh, but we, we continue to correspond, although I, I hesitate to say, I think he may have passed away upon his recent return from France to be with uh, his family there outside of Wilmington in Delaware. Uh, and um, yeah, let me see, amongst others, a curious little boy who has intentions uh, to attend the, the University of Virginia. Uh, I look forward to inviting students from the university to engage in dinner here, perhaps on a Saturday. And they tell me this little boy by the name of Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, is most unusual with the greatest imagination that anyone has ever known. So I look forward to, to that accordingly. Uh, two Englishmen came, uh, excuse me, two gentlemen from Massachusetts um, came to visit as young men, I will never forget it, uh, one Mr. Gray, Frank Gray, uh, and the other Mr. Tinkner, uh, George uh, Tinkner, uh, came to visit me. They were both fascinated with my library, and I took them in uh, to my library, showed them specific books. Uh, I believe Mr. Gray uh, has followed in interest the Anthenaeum, the great Anthenaeum in Boston, uh, to become its head. And I'm happy to announce that Mr. Tickner has become the, uh, the professor of languages at uh, Harvard, uh, the college in Cambridge. And so uh, they are uh, somewhat uh, of a retina that readily come to mind. I would not place one above the other uh, as my favorite, but certainly the Madisons are ever welcome, ever welcome and continue to visit. As I mentioned earlier, they have their own room here. Who could not help but welcome happily Mr. and Mrs. James Madison and <laughs> President Monroe. He lives but down the road. He has his own very comfortable habitation. So he does not visit as much. He's only two miles. But rest assured, as we have had the opportunity to visit here today, I look forward to many more, that you will come a-visiting here at Al Monticello. Your refreshment awaits. And rest you assured, I will ever remain your humble and obedient servant. I thank you, Ms. Wagner. I thank all of you for attendance. Until we meet again, Godspeed.